Hi. You know, Microsoft has done an outstanding job with its new PowerPoint 2007 program. You're going to really love some of these new features in comparison to how you used to do things in PowerPoint 2003. Before we talk about that, I want to say that the things that I'm going to share with you in regards to how I work are not intended to be written in the stone of time. They're simply ways that I have become comfortable in working with PowerPoint. And I want you to know that they're not intended to be any kind of dicta that you always have to follow. So with that caveat in mind, let's take a look at this remarkable new program, Microsoft PowerPoint. 2007. Here's how I thought we would work throughout the presentation. First, I'll show you a short clip of a previous PowerPoint presentation that I've done. Then we'll stop, go to Microsoft PowerPoint 2007, and then we'll go through the steps that I used in order to create the clip that you just witnessed. Okay, let's take a look at our first clip. Hello to everyone on the Tech Committee. This is David Taylor. It's my pleasure to talk to you about how to use Camtasia to create videos for your online classroom. Okay, let's see if we can uh, reproduce that opening. Whenever you open PowerPoint, it's going to open up a slide with some text boxes on it. Your welcome slide. I recommend going ahead and deleting those boxes. I do not use master slides because of the fonts and the animations and the different kinds of designs I use I don't like to be locked into Microsoft's patterns. The next thing I like to do is to set up my views so I go up to the view tab and then click on normal on the left and that gives me my thumbnails on the left then I go to animations and then click on custom animation and that opens the animation panel on the right. So now I know exactly where I am at all times. Thumbnails on the left, animations on the right. Now this next step is very important if you've ever been frustrated by your inability to nudge an object to the exact place where you wanted it on the slide. So go to a range and then pull down to a line and then to grid settings. And in the grid settings dialog box, take the check mark out of snap objects to grid and that will free you up in your ability to move an object anywhere you want and click set as default so that you're not always magnetized with snapping to a grid. Now the next thing I'm going to do is go to view and then turn on rulers that's the top ruler and the uh, side or vertical ruler and then grid lines and these grid lines are very important so that your PowerPoint has a nice sharp aligned uh, look to it if you go to arrange again and then down to grid settings you can uh, tighten up or loosen up those dots on that grid line as much as you want I keep mine as tight as possible giving myself as many focus points as I can get in each uh, one inch square block that you that you see there. Another really useful tool is the display drawing lines. Uh, you might want to be able to turn that on and off because it divides your slide into the four equal sections giving you an exact center point uh, for the middle of your slide that will also help your design. Next I'm going to use the insert text box tool in order to create the two text boxes that are on this title slide. One contains the word welcome and the other contains the byline presenter David Taylor as you saw. Here you can uh, see how having those drawing lines that divide the slide into four equal quarters helps us to align our material exactly. Also, I'm going to establish the title font that I will use throughout the presentation. I think it's best to never have more than two different fonts used throughout a presentation. A title font, which I'm going to use as 20th Century Monotype, and then a body font that I use for all the copy that is on the slide. 20th Century Monotype is a nice, clean, but distinctive sans serif font. It's as readable as Arial or Helvetica, but it has a distinctiveness to it. Next, we're going to use our grid lines to position the text box in the bottom sixth of our slide.
and then after that also use the grid lines to draw a rule underneath it. We go up to insert, we select shapes, and then under shapes select a rule or a line, position it to the left, and to draw a straight line, simply hold down the shift key while dragging the rule of the line across the slide. Holding down the shift key while dragging the cursor is also the way that you draw a perfect circle when using the oval tool. Okay, let's go up to insert again and then insert text box and draw our second text box for our byline presenter David Taylor. Again, we use our grid lines to make equal spaces above and below. At this point, I'm also going to establish my body copy font, which is going to be Myriad Pro. So I select that and then get the point size right. I'm also going to use a uh, technique called camel caps. Camel caps is where you run the words together but distinguish between the words by capitalizing the individual words that are a part of the unit. And I'm also going to continue the gray tone theme that I've already established on this welcome slide by setting off presenter from the words David Taylor. The words David Taylor are the important part of that phrase so that's what I keep in the black. Again, notice how I can use the grid lines in order to line up elements precisely. Next, we're going to get our company logo, or in this case, our school's logo. It's important to have some kind of branding or logo on the welcome slide. In this case, the University of Maryland University College is known best by the cupola that you often see on the letterhead and indeed that you see on this page here. To copy any image from the web, first right click it, pull down to copy image, and that places the image on your clipboard or in your computer's memory. Then return to PowerPoint and use the paste tool, which you see here on the top ribbon, or you can also use control V to insert the image directly onto your PowerPoint slide. Now we have a flat rectangle image in our PowerPoint and one of my rules is to never have a flat image in my PowerPoint but instead to soften the edges, add a drop shadow, change the shape, do something to avoid having that image look like it was simply copied and pasted. Now you're going to see one of the true innovations of PowerPoint 2007 and that is a Photoshop type capability with a highly usable interface as you see here. How easy it is to recolor the photograph because I want to make it fit my grayscale scheme on the welcome slide and how easy it is to change the brightness and the contrast directly on the photograph. Now there are two ways to change the shape of that cupola that you see there. The old way, the 2003 way, and the new way, the 2007 way. 